The electrical activity of myocardial contractile cells. Let's get at this. Okay, so when we're talking about myocardial contractile cells, these are the cells that cause the heart to beat, to cause the heart to pump blood throughout the whole body or up to the lungs. So let's just pretend we're focusing on the left ventricle. The goal of the left ventricle is to create pressure gradients or to create the initial pressure gradient to pump blood throughout the whole body, up to the brain, down to our viscera, all the way down to our big toe, throughout our whole body. So those contractile cells need to become excited before they can contract, just like skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle undergoes an action potential that releases calcium, allows the myofilaments to interact with each other and cause the muscle to contract. That's no different with myocardial contractile cells. So initially what we're going to talk about here is that electrical activity. The electrical activity for MCCs, myocardial contractile cells, is initiated by the influx of sodium. That's fairly reminiscent of a lot of excitable cells, neurons, and skeletal muscle that we've already talked about. Then we're going to see a very short repolarization event due to potassium efflux, as you may expect, that's generally how, if not always how, repolarization events happen in excitable cells. So the efflux of potassium is starting to bring the voltage back down. That stops because there's a cessation of potassium efflux and we get a corresponding calcium influx. We get calcium moving into myocardial contractile cells that's not gonna depolarize the cell anymore but it's gonna maintain the cell voltage up in the positive range. So let's say in this graph, it's roughly at 10 millivolts where it had gone all the way up to 20 millivolts. So in review, we've had sodium influx, depolarizes the cell up to positive 20, a slight repolarization event due to potassium efflux, and then we get what's known as the plateau phase, which is the result of calcium influx. And then we're gonna complete the whole action potential. We're gonna complete this electrical activity due to the resumption of potassium efflux. Sodium influx, potassium efflux, calcium influx to cause the plateau phase of the MCC. And the plateau phase is critical. And then we get the resumption of potassium efflux to fully repolarize the cell. Now, if we throw in the twitch, so in lime green here, this is the mechanical activity. Keep in mind the pink was the electrical activity. So lime green's the mechanical activity. It does not correspond to what I have on the y-axis here in millivolts. It should be tension or force in kilograms. But just keep in mind that in lime green, I'm showing the twitch, which involves the contracted, involves when the muscle contracts and relaxes. First half of its contraction, last half of its relaxation. What we can see in this graph is that ele the electrical activity of the MCC ends nearly the same time as the mechanical activity at the MCC. And that is dramatically different than what we saw in skeletal muscle. So if we review skeletal muscle again, in lime green, we've got the twitch, the mechanical activity, and I'm showing the action potential right here. The action potential for skeletal muscle lasts about one to two milliseconds. If I go back to this slide, the electrical activity or the action potential for the MCC lasts about 200 milliseconds. But going back to this, this action potential only lasts about two milliseconds, which means it's ending even before or just as this skeletal muscle is starting to contract. But as long as electrical activity has fully repolarized, as long as an action potential has fully repolarized and gotten back to the resting state, we can have another action potential. And keep in mind, this is before we even get 
full contraction. And we can have another one. Keep in mind, once you have a depolarization event, you cannot have another depolarization event until that cell has fully repolarized. But the repolarization happens so quickly, we can have a number of action potentials long before this twitch or this muscle starts to relax. And as a result, that will lead to summation and maybe even tetanus and skeletal muscle. That can be have some utility in skeletal muscle. But we absolutely do not want this to happen with cardiac muscle. With cardiac muscle, we want that heart beating and relaxing, contracting and relaxing. When it's contracting, it's pumping blood throughout the whole systemic circulation. Keep in mind, we're just referencing the left ventricle right now. The same certainly applies to the right ventricle. Contracts, pushes blood throughout the body, relaxes, fills up with blood. The relaxation phase, otherwise known as diastole, is critically important because the heart or the left ventricle in this case needs to fill up with blood. And then when it contracts, it pumps that blood throughout the systemic circulation, relaxes, fills up with blood, contracts, and pumps blood throughout the whole body. If the heart muscle engaged in tetany or tetanus, it would no longer, one, be pumping blood. It would be in the contracted state or sustained contraction. And two, and this is just the other side of the same coin, that ventricle would not be filling up with blood. And if it's not filling up with blood, there's no point in it even pumping because there's nothing to pump. So the if we go back to our initial slide right here, the whole purpose of this plateau phase and the electrical activity of MCCs is to increase the duration of the electrical activity to correspond with roughly the end of the twitch, which will prevent the possibility of that muscle engaging in tetanus.